Day 14, folks, of the Brewer's Advent Calendar. So let's see what we got today. 14. Trying to make it so the glare is not too bad there. We have another Hells. I do enjoy Hells, but I'd like to see something a little bit different every now and then in the box. Uh, mostly in German, 1543, so I assume that's the, when the brewery came into effect. 5% alcohol, and not much else there. I'll zoom in so you can see the can. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy Hell's, probably one of my favorite styles of beer. But then again, I'd like to try something different every now and then. And quite a few Hell's in this uh, calendar so far. Hopefully tomorrow will uh, give us something new. That may be a style we never had yet. But I digress. Like I said, I do enjoy hell, so don't get me wrong there. Alright, I'll give my glass a quick cold water rinse. I'll use my Pilsner glass again. Like I said, hells and Pilsner are pretty close. Pretty similar. In fact, hells were actually made, invented, if you will, to compete with Pilsner. And the word hell basically means pale in German. So basically it's going to be a light colored lager. As expected, nice light color. Fair bit of carbonization there. Nice white foamy head. The way in my opinion a lager should be. Pretty clear there. Uh, nothing of the order with the aroma. Hmm. Correction there, a little something there. Dissipated fairly quickly, but I did get a... Not quite sure what it was. Let's see how it tastes. Uh, pretty tasty. Citrus tang to it, not much, but a little bit. Maybe a little bit bready in the taste. Let me check my cue cards again and see what they say about the hills. They have the Munich hills, which I assume is pretty well what this is going to be. Uh, Strata light in color. Two out of five for bitterness. Not very bitter. Uh, like I said, it's a Munich Hells. It says similar in an alcohol appearance to German pills, but malt balance that it shows off the bready flavor. So I am getting a little bit about that. It just says formulated in the 1890s to compete with Pilsner style beers. And it is everyday drinking beer at Bavaria. So generally lagers, they say clean, clear, crisp, and refreshing. And this definitely fits the bill there. Pretty easy drinking beer. I'm still getting a little bit of citrus there. Not a lot, but just something on the tongue there. Not a bad aspect of it by any means. Um, rating wise, my ratings are always out of five, with one being a drain pour. I'm literally going to pour it down the drain, it's that bad. A two is like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this beer, but I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to finish it. A three is a good beer. A four is a very good beer, and a five would be the best beer ever. This one I'm not quite sure yet. It's no less than a three. I don't think it's quite a four or a four point five. So I'm thinking either a three or a three point five, which is not a bad rating, anyways. Um. It is a good beer. It's easy drinking. Like I said, it'll get a little bit of bready taste to it, a little bit of a citrus tang to it. Not a lot, really, really minute. But other than that, nice carbonization. I like that. Hmm, I was.
was actually just about to give it a three, and with that last sip, I'm thinking, okay, maybe a 3.5. You take one more sip. Um, it seems to be a little bit more carbonated than some of the other ones I've had recently, and I like that. So with that aspect of it, I think I'm going to boost it up to a 3.5, which is in between a 3, which is a good beer, and a 4, which is a very good beer. So here you go, folks, for the Flot Zinger Hells Oz Rottenheim 3.5. Hopefully you enjoy me more. We'll uh, tackle the box and see what big day 15 brings us. Until then, enjoy responsibly. Cheers.